Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Frank Tian Shui Xiefian at University of South Carolina Aiken. I'm、uh, on the faculty of School of Business here. Business here, and in fact, this is actually our、uh, lecture that I have given to our Academy of Lifelong Learnings for an introduction to meditation cultivation in Falun Dafa courses. And also, I give given the same to our honors students in our honors class, like honors two hundred one introduction meditation to Falun Dafa cultivation. Okay. All right. Let's get started. If you ever been to China, you will find that the、uh, the landscape is quite you know fascinating. You probably see mountains like this. You know. And this is something、uh, you may find,、uh, you may recall it、uh, familiar, if you have seen movie Avatar. Actually, you know the movie Avatar. Avatar, the producers or directors, I believe, you know, they said they actually got inspiration about the, you know, the sceneries in the movie from something like this in in China. You know. China is considered the land of the divine. And divinity, you know, or belief in divine, is in,、uh, ingrained in the blood of Chinese people, Chinese arts, culture, and、um, are the core of the、uh, our field. Let's say food field with spiritual aspect, and spiritual cultivation is actually at the core of the culture, and also in arts. And other parts of Chinese history and Chinese civilization. In China, we believe in the、uh, that the human being are connected to heaven and to the universe in many ways, and that there's a oneness of man and heaven.、Okay? And this is embodied in、uh, reflected in.、Uh, Some cultural、uh, or spiritual meditation and cultivations in China. If you ever been to China,、uh, if you were in China before nineteen ninety nine, and you will probably see something like this. And this is the morning in Changchun, northeast of China,、uh, before nineteen ninety nine. Excuse me, where people are you know, standing in、um, in parks, public parks. Doing the exercises here, this is the second exercise of Falun Dafa. This is another picture showing a weekend scene in Beijing in 1998, where people are doing their sitting meditations. This picture, the time and place of this picture is unknown, but it looks like it's a, it's somewhere in the city park in China. Where people are doing their morning exercises,、uh, the second exercise in the city square.、Mm -hmm. This is the、uh, children you know, doing sitting meditation in the, at a park in Guangzhou in nineteen ninety eight. This is a picture showing a lady doing meditation in Australia, in Pennsylvania, United States. In Paris, France, in July of nineteen ninety nine, and there's another one, I believe, in the United States as well. Okay, so what are these people doing? We wonder. Okay, they are actually doing the Falun Dafa、uh, exercises, or Falun Gong, also known as Falun Gong exercises. There are five easy to learn exercises. You know. From here, the first one, the first exercise one, exercise two, three, four, and five, sitting meditation number five.、Okay. So, what do、uh, those practitioners believe in and follow? You know, I'm a practitioner of Falun Dafa meditation as well. I've been meditating, like,、uh, practicing for over twenty years. And、uh, we believe in truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, and that's the founding or guiding principle of Falun Dafa: truth, compassion, and tolerance.、Okay. So, 
talking about meditation or cultivation, what is it all about? Okay? What is it about? Cultivation or meditation? Meditation or cultivation? Okay? If you look at the history of China, you know, the essence of Chinese uh, culture is all spiritual. Okay? You probably have seen this word. This is from the, the Taoist scripture talking about the invisible and intangible is a Tao, and the visible and tangible is just a container. Okay? It emphasized the spirituality of ancient Chinese people learning Taoism. The culture of self-cultivation has very deep roots in ancient China. The Yellow, Temper, uh, Yellow Emperor, shown here on the right, is one of the earliest emperors uh, of Chinese uh, in China, and uh, he was uh, 2697 to 2599 BC. In other words, that's uh, 40, uh, 4,000, you know, six, seven hundred years ago. Right? He was uh, called the Yellow Emperor, and he was actually uh, a Taoist practitioner. This picture shows that uh, he went to the mountains to seek the Tao, to ask for this uh, Taoist master on the left for guidance. And he indeed became a Taoist practitioner, and he cultivated you know, during his time and he eventually succeeded in his cultivation and attained, you know, right, righteous, you know, uh, fruition status. And by the time he uh, f completed his cultivation and become, became enlightened, and a dragon, a heavenly dragon, descended to pick him up. And uh, the legend has it that he rode on the back of the dragon and then uh, so did many of his uh, concubines or ministers, you know, people around him. Uh, some succeeded in um, going back to heaven with him. Some, many, you know, did not uh, have the luck. Okay. This is a picture, a very famous picture in China, Chinese history and arts. Okay. And it shows eight immortals crossing the sea. The eight immortals, they're all cultivators. Cultivators in Taoist or Buddhist Buddhism called cultivations. They all have very supernormal abilities. They all have their own divine powers. They can do things, you know, a um, miracle. Okay? And one day they said to get together, they say, let's cross the ocean you know, to the other side. And they all use their different ways, different means to cross the river. And the moral from this picture or the painting is that, you know, of the eight people here, uh, they are the male and the female. They are the young and the old. There's the rich and the poor. There's the dignified and there's the shabby looking. In other words, you know, people, regardless of your uh, social economic status, you know, can all become practitioners, can all seek the Tao, can all become successful in cultivation. Okay. This is uh, called the Eight Immortals Crossing the Sea, or Ba Xian Guo Hai in Chinese. The Chinese people believe that the human body is uh, actually a small universe. This one here shows the acupuncture points and the meridian system in our body. And this one shows that uh, they are interconnected. And it's not just interconnected, you know, within your body. It's actually connected to the small corresponding universe in other dimensions. Sun Simiao, or between eight, 581 and 682, about 1500 years ago, you know, is considered the god of medicine in Chinese history. And here, he, this picture here shows that the, his, um, uh, his uh, depiction of acupuncture point and meridian system and his correspondence to different uh, organs of the human body and the diseases and cure and everything.
Okay. In Chinese traditional medicine, I'm sure you have seen or heard about some of them, and we use uh, acupunctures like this one here to work on those acupuncture points and meridian system to stimulate the flow of qi or energy and to cure cure uh, sickness. Yeah. And also Chinese people use uh, herbal medicines like this to be part of their remedy. Okay. And they are, the you probably heard about the Shaolin, the, the Buddha school martial artist, right? That's the, from Buddha school. Those are Buddhist monks that practice you know, martial arts as their way of cultivation and meditation. And there's also the Tao school, as a symbol, as a symbolized by this Taoist, you know, yin and yang fish you know, symbol here, and eight, di eight diagram here. Right? And there are also the Tai Chi and other Tao school martial arts Qigong as well. Right? Ancient belief, ancient uh, culture of China are also um, reflected in arts. This is a painting by Wu Daozi of Tang Dynasty called uh, 17 Immortals. You know. He himself, Wu Daozi himself, you know, is, uh, is a, a painter, very famous painter in Tang Dynasty a thousand years ago. And also he was a, a cultivator. His celestial eye, eyes were open, and he could see in sceneries in other dimensions. When he saw that the seventeen immortals, you know, crossing, you know, flying over in the sky, he uh, memorized the, the scene, and he actually, you know, re uh, make that you know represent that picture, the scene, by his uh, scripting by his artistic work. Okay. Also, traditional Chinese uh, um, actually, you know, not only believe in God, in Buddha, in mortals, they also cherish, you know, traditional uh, values, moral values, and high morality. This is a picture showing that the, an official Yang Zhen, the guy sitting on the right, and okay, he was appointed to uh, a government, local government somewhere. And then on the day he uh, arrived at his place, official residence, some, uh, a guy, a local person on the left, came to visit him and offer him gold to bribe him. Right? And he refused. Yang Jun refused. And uh, the perpetrator said, you know, hey, you know, don't worry about it. You know, no worries. You know, nobody knows. Only you and me here in this room. Right? And the engine said, "No, it's not just you and me, but the heaven and earth. They all know about this." So, talking about schools of thoughts in, in the in Ch ancient China, there are all together about three different schools of thoughts or belief system in China. The first one, as you most uh, you know probably very well, is Confucianism. The founder of which is Confucius, pictured here. Okay. And in Confucianism, um, they follow loyalty. They, uh, they cherish loyalty and virtue. Okay. And then there is a Chinese indigenous religion, Taoism, founded by Lao Tzu on the left here. And in, uh, in Taoism, they follow and they uh, believe in truth, you know. So to, for Taoist practitioners, you believe in truth, you speak truthfully, act truthfully, cultivate in truth, and in the end, to become a true enlightened person, to find your true self. Okay? That's Taoism, or Taoism. And then there's uh, uh, Buddhism religion, founded by Sakyamuni from ancient India. And they believe in, in uh, compassion, and follow compassion. The picture on the left depicts uh, Sakyamuni spreading his teaching, his dharma, to his disciples under a Bodhi tree. He became enlightened 
and fulfill his cultivation. In China, in ancient Chinese people or our belief system, we believe in the oneness of man and heaven, as I said, called the Tian Ren He Yi in Chinese. And oneness of man and heaven is regarded as the basis of Chinese culture by all scholars and Chinese Chinese study. Yeah. The way cultivation or qigong, you know, is a way to achieve that oneness of man and heaven. And qigong cultivation practice is a generic term generic term for any practice of mind and body transcendence. The picture here on the right shows uh, a lady doing the fifth meditation, fifth exercise, the sitting meditation in Falun Dafa. And you can see that uh, she's sitting in double lotus position and just shows her gong column and uh, immortal infants and the height of her gong column. Yeah. Quite amazing. So really, the, uh, the Chinese people from ancient times, uh, they were spiritual. Actually, we were very spiritual. Okay? And our culture of cultivation practice you know, has been there you know, throughout the times. We believe in the oneness of man and heaven. And uh, we, how do you achieve that? How do you attain that oneness of man and heaven? And cultivation practice is a way to achieve it. And it's a mind and body cultivation, and this is in embedded. Uh, this is in embedded in all aspects of traditional culture. Okay? There's one thing that I have to uh, emphasize here. Uh, there is a Buddhism. There is a Buddhism religion that most people, many people, know about, and then there is a Buddha school qigong. That these two are different. They're separate. Okay? There is a Buddhism. That's a religion. And, but other than Buddhism, there are many Qigongs, many schools of Qigongs that uh, are meant to be ways for cultivating Buddhahood. Okay? And uh, Buddhist school Qigong stress meditation, compassion for others, and salvation through giving up attachments and desires of the human world. Okay? This is the giant. Buddha statue, you know, bronze Buddha statue on the Lantau Island in Hong Kong. Now let's focus uh, on Falun Dafa, right? Falun Dafa, uh, Falun Gong, or Qigong exercises of uh, Falun Dafa, Falun Gong. Okay? Uh, I have been a practitioner for Falun Dafa since to, uh, 1996 or 97, and that's when I first heard about it. And then I formally started practicing it on January the 1st, 2001. So just about uh, 20 years. Okay? We believe in truth. We follow, believe and follow truth, compassion, and tolerance. Again, this picture here, painting here on the left, shows uh, a lady, a girl, doing the sitting meditation. You can see she's in double lotus position. There's a following rotating. And there's a gong column above her. Okay. So let's focus on Falun Dafa meditation and cultivation. The central uh, piece that I want to introduce you today. On the left here, this is the Zhuan Falun, the English edition of the main uh, work, main book. On the right, this is the uh, Zhuan Falun in Chinese, the central publication of Falun Dafa. Again, in Falun Dafa, the central theme or central tenet is truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. It includes also, in addition to the book, the teaching, there are, uh, are there exercises. There are five sets of exercises. The first one is called the Buddha showing a thousand hand, a thousand hand, or Buddha stretching a thousand hand. Okay? The second one is the following standing stance, standing meditation exercise. The third one is called the penetrating the two cosmic streams. The fourth one is following heavenly circuit, circulation or following heavenly circuit. And the fifth one is sitting meditation 
called Strengthening Divine Powers. Okay. The, there are many characteristics of Falun Dafa exercise and meditation and exercise. Okay. The first one, Buddha showing a thousand hand, it opens up all energy channels in the body. That should be the first one you do when you do the exercise. The second one, following standing stance, uses four wheel embracing postures for enhancing energy level and attain wisdom, attaining wisdom. Okay. The longer you can do it, hold your arms, the better. Okay. The third exercise, penetrating the two cosmic streams. It purifies one's body with the cosmic energy through up and down hand strokes. Okay. The fourth exercise, heavenly, foreign heavenly circulation, the foreign heavenly circuit, it rectifies all abnormal conditions in the body by enabling body energy circulation over large areas. Okay? And uh, the fifth one, fifth exercise, is strengthening divine powers. It's a comprehensive sitting meditation exercise. Okay? Falun Dafa is an advanced practice of self-cultivation. Okay? And it was founded by Mr. Master Li Hongzhi, the practices master, in 1992, uh, and uh, he made it public. He founded this, uh, founded this cultivation way, and introduced this to the public in 1992, first in China, and then in 19, since 1995, he has been um, teaching or offering, you know. Uh, Introducing the meditation to people worldwide. Okay. It is a discipline in which assimilation to the highest qualities of the universe, Zhen Shan Ren, that's Chinese for truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, is the foundation of practice. Okay. All Falun Dafa activities are free, free of charge. Okay. All books are available for free downloading from the internet. So are the instruction and exercise videos and audios. All instruction is given by all instruction is given by volunteers free of charge. Okay. Foreign Dafa now is practiced by millions of tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people in more than forty countries worldwide. Okay. Foreign Dava has received proclamations and awards from hundreds of cities governments and uh, in the United States. This is the official website of Falun Dafa, falundafa.org, where you can get all the, the materials, videos, books, audios, etc. Okay? All free of charge. And the focus of Falun Dafa practice is the mind. With the cultivation of one's mind and thoughts, or we call it xin xin, being singled out as the key to increase your gong energy. Okay? So the height of a person's gong is directly proportionate to that of the person's xin xin. Okay? The concept of xin xin encompasses the transformation of virtue, it's a white form of matter and the substance, and the karma, a black form of matter, substance. Okay? It also includes forbearance, discernment and abandonment, that is, forsaking ordinary human desires and attachments, and managing to endure the most trying of ordeals. Okay. In Falun Dafa meditation and cultivation, both mind and body are cultivated. Okay. The practice consists of five exercises, which are simple and easy to learn, and the mind is not used to direct anything, and there are no associated risks, and the gong energy increases very quickly. Okay. Location, time, and direction are not of concern when exercising, nor is how one concludes one's exercise session. Falun okay. Dafa cultivation. Um, you probably have heard about that. There is a great health benefit 
of practicing Falun Dafa. There is a book called Life and Ho uh, Hope Renewed, The Healing Power of Falun Dafa. You probably can find on uh, falundafa.org website. Right? And uh, it has uh, first-hand accounts of health benefits. Many people just like you take up the practice of Falun Dafa and experience significant health benefits. Especially today, with this uh, CCP virus or coronavirus, you know, Wuhan uh, pandemic is spreading widely worldwide. You need Falun Dafa to enhance, you know, your immune system and be healthy and stay healthy and free and not affected by the virus. When we talk about Falun Dafa, we have to mention the persecution of Falun Gong by the Chinese Communist Party. Started in July of 1999, the Chinese Communist Party bought um, uh, leader Jiang Zemin, you know, he started the persecution. And that persecution reached almost every corner of the country. And um, by, uh, I haven't checked recently, you know, by January of this year, 2020, over 4,300 confirmed deaths have been reported so far. Over 100,000 were sentenced to forced labor camps. Thousands of people, are practitioners, are locked up in psychiatric hospitals. Millions were in brainwashing sessions, education camps, and most, uh, most notoriously, organ harvesting you know, has been taking place on Falun Gong practitioners by the Chinese Communists. But uh, regardless of the persecution, the practitioners of Falun Dafa or Falun Gong in China, they have been uh, appeal, appealing peacefully in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. Nowadays, you cannot you know, hold a banner like this, which says truth, compassion, and tolerance in public in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. You'll be arrested. And uh, peaceful appeals are being suppressed. And this is an interesting picture. Uh, where is, you know, 36 Western practitioners and non-Chinese practitioners. They went to Beijing to be in front of uh, the, uh, the Tiananmen Gate at Tiananmen Square in Beijing. And they hold up the banner uh, saying, choose compassion and tolerance. And uh, then all of them were, as well, were arrested and soon kicked out of China. According to uh, the U.S. State Department's country report on human rights, Falun Gong constitutes at least half of the officially recorded inmates in labor camps in China. Okay. And according to U.N. Special Rapporteur, Manfred Nowak, Falun Gong represents 66% of all alleged torture cases in China. Okay. And of course, the most uh, evil act is the killing practitioners for their organs or organ harvesting. Okay. Uh, organ harvesting, harvesting has become a profitable business for the Chinese communists. This chart here shows the cost of transplantation. Transplantation. You can see that for kidney transplant, uh, it costs about 60, sixty-two thousand U.S. dollars. Liver transplant, ninety-eight to one hundred thirty thousand. Liver kidney transplant, one hundred sixty to one hundred eighty thousand. Kidney pancreas transplant, one hundred fifty thousand. Lung transplant. 150 to 170, heart transplant, 130 to 160, and the cornea transplant, about $30,000. Okay. This is over on the Chinese you know, hospital's website. This is from one of uh, the Chinese hospitals showing the skyrocketing increase in organ harvesting. They show that as you know their achievement. You can see... Before 1999, there were very few. 
And starting in 2000, you know, there's a rapid increase in the number of, you know, um, organ transplants in China. And this 1999 is when the persecution and incarceration started in China. This one shows one hospitals, they are uh, organ transplant research institute, the number of uh, liver transplants over the years. Again, before 2001, there are very few. You know? And after 2001, after 2004, there's a uh, rapid increase in the number of uh, liver transplant after 1999. This one shows the, the trend in Chinese organ harvesting. Okay? Mm, you can see that before 2001, there's a minimal. Okay? This is the number y-axis this shows the number of transplants okay y-x-axis shows the year from 1999 to 2009 you can see there's a surge between 2001 2002 and 2003 and 4 okay? and then there's a drop after 2006 why is there's a drop because because this is the one in 2006 that's when the the news about organ transplant, illegal organ harvesting, uh, was re, uh, revealed, and the peace, the world of people, the world, started to learn about this. So truth saves lives. To find more about this organ harvesting, I want you, I recommend you to read this report by David Mattis and David Kilgore, two very noble, you know, Canadian, um, Canadian. Right. David Mattis uh, is a human rights you know, attorney, and I met him personally, very honorable man. And uh, David Kilgore was a Canadian spokes, uh, statesman. And they published this Bloody Harvest, revised, revised report into allegations of organ harvesting of organ practitioners in China. And uh, that was uh, a very detailed very uh, authoritative. Okay. More information about Falun Dafa, you can go to falundafa.org or clearwisdom.net or falunainfo.net or about organ harvesting investigation.net. You can get further information on that. Okay. And that's all I have for this, uh, med uh, this presentation and lecture. Uh, you ready to meditate? Okay. Go to the website. Download the book, check your, check uh, online for exercise sites, you know near you. Uh, they are worldwide, everywhere worldwide, in many 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 cities and countries, and you can find the free instructions, help by local practitioners who are who are very willing to show you, to teach you the exercise, and then you are ready to meditate.